Olympus has fallen. For the first time in 40 years, the Socceroos have lost a meaningful World Cup qualifier at home, losing 2-0 to Japan, and with that defeat, hopes of an automatic place at Qatar 2022 have been dashed. I'm Joey Lynch, Anta Jukic. The game, well, it was a disaster, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I guess from minute one to minute 90, it was nothing short of a tactical disaster class from uh, Graham Arnold. But the interesting dynamic about it was until Bruno Fonaroli and Marco Tilio coming on, it was still salvageable for Australia, irrespective of the, let's say, complexion of the game. And you can't really say from a Japanese perspective that it wasn't fair from a, like when you're looking at the result. Japanese had more territory, they got into more dangerous areas. Australia obviously looking to try to get out transition and get Hrustic to tee up Duke. <laughs> it worked once, but it went straight at the goalkeeper, the 40th minute header. But just the inclination will be to point at the absences that the Australians had, a host of players injured, COVID, all that jazz. But this was part of a longer trend. There was nothing in this Socceroos performance that was out, was, wasn't in keeping with how they'd been going in previous games. It was just a continuation of that. They'd been playing badly before. They played badly last night just with different players. Yeah, and it's not just that they played badly. It's that they were utilised poorly That's as well. That's the biggest thing, utilised poorly. And the major dynamic in all of this, irrespective of the absences, they probably would have been used in the same way for the same level of low functionality that Australia played with last night in relation to gaining momentum against Japan and because we have to remember this was a game Australia had to win and there was a very pragmatic approach to all of that last night and that's why we are that's why we are where we are beyond the lamentations that always accompany uh, a loss from the Socceroos or indeed the Matildas in a big game it appears that a new dynamic has been added in that there appears to be well the, the chair under Graham Arnold genuinely appears to be hot. Reports coming out that his position as Socceroos boss is under threat after the Saudi Arabia game. I guess, Ante, it seems a knee-jerk reaction, especially in this phase of qualification when the bed has already been made, so to speak. The only justification I could see would be it's a circuit breaker, but Football Australia thinks he's lost the locker room. They just think this team can perform well enough in a playoff with a different coach, but... I get, I get the feeling it's too little, too late. Yeah, I guess we were saying this after yeah. the Asian Cup and the and the exit at the hands of the United Arab Emirates. This was the bid that Football Australia had made for themselves, and to now try and create that change in dynamic this late in the qualification phase, when they have felt and when they have been, let's say, steadfast in their support of Graham Arnold, especially over the eleven game win streak, the famed eleven game win streak, that I mean, where there was a lot of where there were a lot of uh, you know things happening under the surface that belied the nature of those results and the performances. Uh, James Johnson was on the record backing Arnie for the playoffs just in the days leading into the Japan game. And I, I, guess it, I guess it flies in the face of an educated hunch or information that I've been able to garner around the Socceroos that there is a, a general loss of respect for Graham Arnold, both as a tactician and as a person in terms of how they de how he deals with the players. It's a very important issue that one would have to rectify, but I get the sense that it might be too late. I find it very interesting that these stories are emerging less than 24 hours after the defeat to Japan. As you said, Football Australia have been very clear in their desire to back Arnold, but now Apparently, you know, talk, briefings, call it whatever you like, are coming out against him. These stories are emerging and it's, it just smacks to me a little bit maybe of getting it in front of the narrative as well. It wasn't us, it was Arnie's fault, Absolutely. despite the fact that he's one entire a systemic failing and he's not just a failing of the soccer Yeah, I, I don't think that reflects solely on Graham Arnold, how quickly the discourse has changed with respect to that 11 game win streak It's more reflective of how Australian football interprets football and creates that discourse in response.